I'd like to call the March 1, 2011 meeting of the Buncombe County Board of Commissioners to order. And as always, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance, if you'll join me. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. I recognize Commissioner Peterson to do our invocation tonight. May we pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we gather this evening with grateful hearts, um, grateful especially for some great news we heard today, and that is that a fine young man who is one of our bright and shining stars in planning is uh, on his way home from Iraq, Josh O'Connor, and we are so very thankful for that. Also, on the list of, of folks that we're thankful for this evening, and actually I made this list before coming in tonight, I'm very thankful for Mike Ruby and all the, all the SROs and the great job that they do in Buncombe County. I'm thankful for Linda Brown, who works in our tax department with such a, a happy smile and a grateful heart and uh, the wonderful work she does. For Jerry Vihan, who works in emergency services. For Dr. Richard Oliver, who heads our health board and does it with, with such grace. For Maria Wise, who works in soil and water conservation and is expecting a child and, and does great work. I'm grateful for Drew Reisinger, who has just been appointed as our Register of Deeds. And, but I'm especially grateful for Otto De Bruyne, who, who worked for decades in that office and set such a high standard. I'm grateful for all the folks who, who live in all the municipalities that are located here in Buncombe County. Whether you live in Woodfin or Montreat or Black Mountain or Biltmore Forest, Weaverville or Asheville, you're all residents of Buncombe County, and we are so grateful for each and every one of the folks who reside throughout Buncombe County. We do live in a wonderful county and a beautiful state and the greatest nation in the world, and we should wake up every morning thanking our God for the privilege of living and serving and working in this great country. For all these many blessings, for every citizen who resides in Buncombe County, for the elected officials who are here today to do the work for those citizens, for everyone who works and lives in Buncombe County, we are eternally grateful. And we ask you to heap your many blessings upon each and every one of them. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. In accordance with the code of ethics adopted by this board, it's the duty of every board member to avoid actual and apparent appearances of, of conflict. Does anyone know of any potential or actual conflict of interest tonight on any matter we have here. If not, we'll proceed. Is there a motion to follow the agenda with the addition of the resolution delegating authority uh, to co-manager to, co -manager to execute estoppel agreements? So moved. Second. Okay, th is there any discussion? All those in favor of adopting the agenda, which would include adopting all the consent items, uh, say aye. 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 All opposed, no. We will follow the agenda with the addition, and I'll put that under new business, uh, the resolution. And I think Mr. Frew is going to talk about that. We'll start off tonight with uh, some seats over here if people need to sit. Uh, Grow TV together, kinder. We have our clerk, uh, Kathy Hughes, and Tim Rose to talk about some wonderful county employees who have... Uh, been caught being kind. That's right. They have been. Um, it's certainly an honor for me to get to introduce Tim, who's going to give you some really good news. But I wanted to remind you what Grow BC is. Grow BC Together is your campaign for 2011. It is focusing on your core services. We are going to repeat these throughout the year in January. We looked at Go Greener to, to make us all greener, and we gave you a tip every day and focused all of our TV on green. In February, we were making you healthier, and thank you, David, for your telling us about your uh, journey to get thinner and <laughs> to eat healthier. Um, and then in March, and this is the first of March, so I'm excited to kick off Kinder. All month we'll be focusing on that core value of being kinder. Next month it's safer, and after that, smarter. But it is certainly an honor for me to introduce Tim, who's going to tell you about some folks who, even though they do some of the hardest jobs that we have as county employees, have ha found in their hearts kindness and have shown that 
to other people. So just listen to him. This is, it really is amazing. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kathy, and thanks to the board today for having us. We're delighted today to recognize several staff who recently have received praise and thanks from their customers at the Department of Social Services. And it's important to note that the feedback that we've received really comes at a time when our community continues to struggle in this poor economy, leading many folks to feel anxious and frustrated and hopeless. And as you'll see from the excerpts of the letters that we've received, and we, we've left packets for you individually there uh, that you'll have there in front of you, our public assistance employees at the Department of Social Services can really make a difference in the lives of our citizens and can oftentimes be one of the few calming and compassionate experiences that they might exper uh, experience during a, a typical day. And so to kick us off, uh, first of all, I'd like to recognize Brenda Gregory. Uh, Brenda is a food assistance worker. That's the old food stamp program. Uh, Brenda handles a caseload of about 600 households. And in the first letter that you have there, a recent client wrote us to, to say about uh, Brenda, I just wanted to take the time and tell somebody what a kind, patient, professional, and just all around nice person Ms. Gregory is. This customer goes on to say that Ms. Gregory has maintained her professional and non-judgmental attitude even when the customer gets upset. The client also says about Ms. Gregory, she is even nice when I've had a bad moment. And I know that working with the public isn't always easy. Again, Brenda Gregory. Mm. Uh, <laughs> our next employee is Virginia Hall. And Virginia works in our adult assistance, our adult Medicaid program, working in the long-term care program. And in the second letter that you have there, Ms. Hall's client uh, wrote to thank her, uh, even though Virginia was not really able to authorize any benefits for her, what the client wanted to recognize was Virginia's commitment and determination to getting some information that was very important uh, to that uh, individual for their situation. And she ended her note by simply saying, I just wanted to send along this note to thank you for your kindness. And just these few words, I really believe, are so indicative of the compassionate and kind manner in which Virginia does her work on a regular basis and all of our public assistance staff at Department of Social Services performing their work on a regular basis. So again, Virginia Hall. Our next staff member is Sue Emilio. And Sue works in our Family and Children's Medicaid Division. Uh, she also carries a caseload of about 600. And in an email that we received, which is your third document there, her client states, Ms. Emilio has been my Medicaid worker since July of 2009, and she has continually extended professional excellence to my family. It is a very pleasant experience to work with her, and we appreciate her professionalism. Unfortunately, in today's society, we do not always receive such courteous help from our community. Thank you for providing her to our community. So again, excerpts from another kind note about another kind worker, Sue Emilio. Uh, Kathy Courtney was unable to uh, join us today, but uh, we had a client that recently sent us a letter about Kathy saying thanks so much for your kind and caring heart and genuine spirit for providing me access to Medicaid. She goes on to say at the end of her letter, you magnificently carried us through the process and your dedication to the community has proven you are creating positive results for your clients. Buncombe County is really blessed to have you as an employee. So I wanted to share those comments uh, in, a, in a, a letter about Kathy, even though she couldn't be here today. Uh, Lisa Beasley. It's our fifth employee today. Lisa works in our adult Medicaid division. Uh, Lisa works yeah. primarily with uh, disabled adults. And Lisa saw a client recently who was homeless, uh, and this individual came to the Department of Social Services, was in an extremely desperate situation with feelings of great despair and hopelessness. And this individual wrote, 
I wanted you to know how much impact a kind word or someone's concern can have on an individual. The week I saw Ms. Beasley, I was very depressed and didn't know if I wanted to live any longer. Her kindness and concern was a turning point in my life. From her act of genuine concern has grown a garden of hope and faith that mm. things will eventually work out. Mm. I can't thank her enough for what she gave me that day. Mm. And besides the public assistance benefits and the kind words and the support that Lisa offered that day, she also made some very critical referrals and contacts to other community partners that may have very well have saved that individual's life at that time. Um, and, and that's what's also so important about Lisa and, and all of our staff that are assisting our citizens, especially in these tough economic times. Uh, they do have the knowledge, they have the desire to go that extra mile to get the information that's needed for our citizens so that they can in turn then go address the other many critical issues that they're facing in their day-to-day -day lives. So these are five employees that are truly representative of the caring compassion exhibited by all of our staff in economic services, and we wanted to share the positive uh, responses that we got from some of our customers. So thank you for allowing us. Yeah. Well done, well done. Any of you ladies like to share any thoughts? <coughs> <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> thank you so much for your good job. I would just like to say that I'm glad that I was hired by Buncombe County. I uh, have a great supervisor, great, a great director, and it's my pleasure to serve the mm -hmm. citizens of Buncombe County. We're my glad you're here, yeah. all of us. All of you. All of you. All righty. Um, is there a motion? We have a, a swearing in today and some, some matters. Is there a motion to move that? Uh, Mr. Rice. That's our move. Second. Any discussion about moving that a little bit out of order and take that next? Take it on. Be good. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Mr. Reisinger, we are ready for you. Let's um, <laughs> let's see here. I think the way we're going to do this is we're going to talk about your salary, and then we're going to do a motion, and then if uh, it goes the way I believe it's going to go, we're going to swear you in. <laughs> So let's talk about, uh, first of all, is there a, a motion to, uh, or let's, let's have a little discussion of the, the salary. Was there some research done here? Our, our personnel director did some research for us with other units across the, other counties across the place and came up with <clears throat> these numbers. It, there's, there's not a salary grade now, so it's got to be by us. It would be a grade 86 if it was in our thing, but this is an elected office and it didn't have those things. But the appropriate was salary range of 78,497 to 120,023. Given this current grade instructions <coughs> are that all new employees start at the entry level of $78,497,000 a year. The job description used for the rest of these is the attached North Carolina State's General Statute 161. I won't read that. Y'all don't want to hear that anyway. But it's, it's just 20 pages what the, long. What the register deeds does, and we wish him well. We wanted to do this first, uh, young man, because we thought if you didn't like the salary, you might not want to be sworn in. So we uh, <laughs> we're going to throw that out there to you, see if you like it. But that's, <laughs> I, I, I move we pay the young fella $78,497. I right second here. that motion. Okay, there's been a motion and second to set the salary for the new register deeds at $78,497. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I have just a couple of quick things. Yes, uh, one is to thank the HR department for providing the data that we needed in terms of looking at comparable budgets and numbers of people in other departments as well as um, years of service. And it helped us really find, a th I feel like, a very kind of professional uh, entry-level number there. So uh, I, feel, I feel great about that. Uh, this is kind of the first time I've really thought about, like, from kind of a responsibility of, of kind of a hiring in a way, uh, even though we didn't hire you, the Democratic Party of Buckingham County technically hired you right now, but um, but kind of thinking through all the different benefits that, that new employees get, I was, uh, I was moved by and concerned by the, w one of our policies that we currently have for new employees, which is a six-month waiting period for health insurance. 
And I think that's, that might have made sense once upon a time. I feel like right now that's, that's way out of the norm with most businesses and other local governments. So, uh, and you know, kind of looking at you right there, it's like, oh, you should get health insurance after 30 days. So wanted to see if we could kind of revisit that and, uh, and look, look at that going forward in terms of just, and not just for Ms. Rice, and but for all our new employees. It would take an action of the board to waive the uh, to waive or to change the the waiting period, but we're happy to bring that back for your consideration if you'd like, or if you want to waive it on this particular case, you can do that. I wouldn't want to do it just on it for for Mr. Reisinger. I think that would set a bad precedent, but um, well, I, I think it's an opportunity to look at it again. Well, fair, fair. What what we do? All right, he's got to run again in November. H had he run or was elected in? in November, when would his insurance started if he was an elected official? Like. You're kidding me. No, sir. I'm, it's still a six okay, month. I'd, okay. <laughs> That's hard to believe, but November 12th. So, so would, would that be okay if we kind of revisited that? Absolutely. And no problem. I, I'd entertain a motion to waive the rule for the registered deeds if, we, if it's proper. Is there any motion to do that? Second, the motion. All right. There's been a motion and second to waive the uh, the six-month six waiting period for health insurance for the new register deeds. And just to be clear, but I'm also asking for us to kind of look at that policy in general, too, because I don't think Mr. Reisinger is asking for special treatment, nor no, do I not. think we he want to do that for um, political. But So we're going to fix this right now, but also look at the other going forward. I agree. Okay. I, in fact, he we never talked about it, but but I think it's the right thing to do. And I'd like to see us do it tonight. Any other discussion? And we'll incorporate changing that whole policy into our third party review so that we look at that comprehensively. And bring that back. Uh, With the, study. the study. All right. Very good. So there's been a motion and a second to uh, waive the six, six month uh, health insurance uh, waiting period for Mr. Reisinger. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. And is there a motion? Um, I think we have a motion already for the. And a second. And a second for the salary set at 78,497. Is there any discussion of that motion to set the salary for Mr. Reisinger? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The salary is set for the new register deeds at $78,497. Finally, our second step, uh, is there a motion to appoint uh, Mr. Reisinger? So moved. Move we suspend the reading and pass that resolution, Mr. Chairman. All right. There's been a motion by Commissioner Jones, a second by Vice Chair Stanley, to pass the resolution to appoint Mr. Reisinger as Register of Deeds. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor of the resolution appointing him say aye. 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 All opposed, no. We have a new register deeds, and let's swear them in. Deeds of Buncombe County. I, Drew Reisinger. I, Drew Reisinger. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear that I will support and maintain the Constitution. That I will support and maintain the Constitution. And the laws of the United States. And the laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and the laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully and truly. And that I'll faithfully and truly, according to the best of my skill and ability, according to the best of my skill and ability, execute the duties, execute the duties of the office of the Register of Deeds for Buncombe County, of the office of the Register of Deeds of Buncombe County, in all things according to law, in all things according to law. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, new president. <laughs> Go ahead, 
and do the legalities here. You'll sign right there. Do one more thing that wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> Things like a BAR. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Congratulations. Let's see, oh, Mr. Frank, will you? Congratulations, y'all, Miss Wright. And let me recognize our new register needs for a few comments and maybe introduce this beautiful woman. So, this is my wife, Katie. <laughs> hey, Katie. Um, Um, Chairman Gant and Commissioners, um, I'm humbled and honored to be here today. Um, thank you for having me here, um, and thank you to the Executive Committee of the Buncombe County Democratic Party for choosing me to fill out the remainder of Otto DeBrule's term. I'm honored to have this opportunity to serve the people of Buncombe County as your new Register of Deeds. I will continue to pr provide the same excellent service for accessibility to uh, the Register of Deeds in our Buncombe County government has always been known for. One of my campaign promises uh, that I would like to fulfill is reducing the previous salary of the Register of Deeds by 40%. The county commissioners undertook a thorough process to set an appropriate salary for the incoming Register of Deeds, but it was not quite 40% reduction. I want to recommit my campaign promise tonight and let the public know that I will be donating the remainder of that money to the Buncombe County Schools Foundation and the Asheville City Schools Foundation. Once more, I'm honored and humbled to serve you as the next Register of Deeds. My door will always be open to you. Thank you guys very much. Number next. And I would, uh, in addition to our new Register of Deeds, I'd like to recognize uh, Sheriff Van Duncan is here tonight, and we have City Councilman uh, Gordon Smith also in the audience. Are there any other elected officials? I didn't see any others, but... Um, we appreciate you taking time to come tonight. And you are free to stay. You're welcome to go. Uh, we will excuse you. You've got a lot <laughs> to do, and, and we're just happy you're here. Congratulations, Drew. Uh, next up, we have uh, some public hearings on rezoning request. We have Debbie Trumpy here to talk about, and we're going to do four different hearings. So uh, if you'll tell us about the first one, please, ma'am. Um, Maybe uh, Mr. Frew, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we could have one public hearing to discuss all of the applications, okay. but then uh, separate uh, motions for each applicant when it, it comes to the approval process. I want to keep it legal. Very good. good we'll do, that sounds good to all of us. Yeah, good. Sure. Um, Angela Allen has applied to rezone tax lot 9688038776 and lot 86257 Dela Riddle. Eula Riddle has applied to rezone 9688037837811 Dela Lane. Eddie Bryant has applied to rezone tax lot 9688035680645 Buckeye Cove Road. And Tanya Ellis has applied to rezone 9688036731, 5 Delaree Lane. The applicants have requested the rezoning which totals 4.02 acres <coughs> from R1 single family residential district to R3 residential district. The properties are located on the north side of Buckeye Cove Road, east of its intersection with Delaree Lane. The properties con currently contain a variety of uses, including mobile homes, site built homes, and modular homes. Although the surrounding area is zoned R1 and RLD, the area is a mix of uses, which includes double wide and single wide mobile homes. Given the number of owners making the request and the number of adjacent properties involved, the requested zoning would be consistent with surrounding uses and the Buncombe County Comprehensive Land Use Plan as the 2006 update indicated that R3 is suitable for higher density uses and mobile homes. The requested zoning would not be detrimental to the owner, adjacent neighbors, and surrounding community as it is consistent with the surrounding area which already contains mobile homes. And the planning department recommends approval of the request. The planning board held a public hearing on February 7th. 
At that time, there was a fifth applicant for the rezoning, and um, that application was for an additional 5.43 acres. Prior to the hearing, the board had received several letters opposing the rezoning, and five people spoke at the hearing against the rezoning. Uh, their concerns were the, the larger acreage involved. They were afraid um, that it could be converted to a mobile home park, which is a conditional use in R3, or multifamily uh, uses, and they were concerned about the demands that that higher density would place on the infrastructure. Um, the fifth applicant who heard those concerns of the neighbors withdrew his application um, for the, the 5.43 acres, leaving just 4.02 acres uh, of the uh, remaining four applications. The planning board did unanimous, unanimously recommend approval of the rezoning of those four ap remaining applicants. Did you have any questions on, on that? Any questions from the board? Oh, sure. I just have one quick question. And did, did the removal of the applicant change anything in terms of, because, um, I mean, R3 is R3, so it, there, was, there was nothing that shifted with that withdrawal? No, just, okay. just the total acreage and, and the possibilities, which could be done with a larger tract of land if those were assembled. So there, so that that did have an impact in terms of like, could you kind of? I know a lot of it's well, speculation, but in not terms of not a regulatory impact. It's just that there the was the practical a, impact of what could happen on with that. Exactly. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, we will open the public hearing, and I think we can do for all four tracks. Is that right? I think we can, Mr. Chairman. The important part is that for each separate request and application that the board make a uh, motion for the statement of consistency and then separately for the ordinance. All right, Mr. Frew. Then we'll begin the public hearing. I have 5 o'clock. Uh, are there any, any public hearing uh, requests to speak on any of these four applications for rezoning? Yes, ma'am. Come on. And if you'll give your name and where you live, and uh, we'll, get, we'll have three minutes. Okay. I'm not really sure what I want to say. My name is Angela Allen, and I live at 7 Delivery Lane. And um, the zoning that occurred was kind of, we were blindsided by it. We didn't really know until we went to get a permit to put a single wide trailer on our land for our son. And we found out that it was zoned. So that's why we're doing this, so we can put a single wide trailer on our land for our son. Um, and Eddie Bryant's my father, Tanya Ellis is my sister, and Eula Riddle has recently passed away. Um, so I'm the only person that's here that's wanting to do this because the um, other people were busy and couldn't be here today. Um, but um, we just hope that y'all approve this for us so we can move forward to help our son. Thank you, Miss Allen. Thank you. Any other comments tonight? on any of the four parcels. If not, I will declare the public hearing closed at 5.02. All right, Mr. Is there, Chairman, I, I move we grant the uh, permission to Angela Allen for her property to be rezoned. And do we have to do two? Yeah, there, we have four applications. for So for each one, you can make it just short and simple and say for the uh, Angela Allen uh, request uh, move to accept the statement of consistency as presented and uh, move its approval. I in thought the that's what coordinate. I just said. Yes, sir. That is. <laughs> second. <laughs> Been a motion by Vice Chair Stanley, a second by Commissioner Jones to accept the motion of consistency and rezoning request for Angela Allen. Is there any other discussion? Question. Question. Yes, ma'am. Call for the question. Call for the question. <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Ms. Allen, your request is granted. No. We, no. we, we need a separate motion in order for a uh, motion for the ordinance. Chairman, I move an ordinance regarding uh, Ms. Allen's request to amend the official zoning maps of Buncombe County uh, be approved. Second. second. There's been a motion by Commissioner Jones, a second by Commissioner Bailey. Uh, any discussion of that motion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 I'll oppose no. Ms. Allen, you're now approved. 
Move approval of the statement of consistency for Eddie Bryant. Second. And a motion by Commissioner uh, Bailey, a second by Commissioner Peterson. Any discussion for Mr. Bryant's request? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. The statement of consistency is adopted. Any other mo motion? Chairman, on the I move to accept the ordinance for the Eddie Bryant property. Second. second. There's been a motion by Vice Chair Stanley, a second by Commissioner Bailey to adopt the uh, map, the ordinance uh, change in the maps. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Bryant's request is approved. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the statement of consistency for the Tanya Ellis property. Second. Okay. A motion by Commissioner Peterson, a second by Commissioner Bailey to accept the statement of consistency by uh, Ms. Ellis. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, no. The motion carries 5-0. Is there a motion to adopt the maps? So move. Second. <laughs> There's been a motion to adopt the maps. I'll change the language on it. <laughs> yes, yes. <a> little bit. <laughs> Commissioner Peterson is second by Commissioner Jones. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Move approval statement consistently for uh, Eula Riddle. Second. second. Motion by Commissioner Bailey, second by Vice Chair Stanley. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. Uh, accept ordinance. Eula Riddle, please. Second. And a motion by Commissioner Peterson, a second by Vice Chair Stanley to adopt the uh, maps and ordinance. Ms. Riddle, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. I think we've got them all adopted. Thank you, Ms. Adams, for coming today. Or Ms. Allen, excuse me. Okay, next up we have Community Transportation Program Grant Application for Mountain Mobility, and Ms. Lori Embry is going to, Embry is going to tell us about that uh, potential, that agreement. Ms. Embry? Uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to give you just a little bit of background. Um, Buncombe County is eligible from the North Carolina Department of Transportation, Public Transportation Division, to receive uh, grant funds to fund part of our capital and administrative costs for our community transportation program, Mountain Mobility. The public hearing held today is to receive local comments on the proposed application and is a requirement of the grant process. We plan to apply for a total of $454,125 in state funds for administration, administrative costs and $263,700 in capital funds. The local match funds will come out of our fiscal year 2012 uh, transportation division budget. Um, the capital portion of the application uh, will cover six desktop computers that need to be replaced at our offices as well as uh, one non-lift van and five lift equipped vehicles, all of which have reached their useful life mileage as determined by DOT. Um, the actual amount that we're requesting for capital, the 263700 is a little bit higher than what was originally put in your, um, in your packet information as well as what was put in the advertisement. And when we drafted those two documents, all we had to go on were the es cost estimates based on FY11. Uh, vehicle costs, DOT has now put out their 2012 costs and they've gone up $16,000. So that additional money is for the vehicles. Um, the administrative funds cover expenses such as salaries and benefits, telephones, postage, printing, um, marketing, advertising, and, as well as our drug and alcohol testing program. Uh, we would like to thank the board for its continuing support of the Mountain Mobility Program, as well as the North Carolina Department of Transportation, Public Transportation Division, through which these funds are provided. We understand that funding challenges for state and local governments to meet the level of funding needed across North Carolina continue, and we want to assure you and our citizens in Buncombe County and Mountain Mobility passengers that we continue to be committed to using all the funds received to effectively and as cost efficiently as possible meet transportation needs in our community. Thank you again for your time, and we welcome any comments from the public on the proposed application for our admin and capital costs. 
Are there any questions for Mrs. Embry? Mr. Fru, do we have do we need a motion for a public hearing? Or we just can you just go straight into it. Okay, just been my nature of it. It's being announced, announced. Don't it? Yeah. Okay, any comments or questions? To the and board? You're replacing how many units? We'll be replacing six vehicles. Six vehicles. Yes. How many do you have total? Our total fleet is 42 vehicles. Um, we have. 10 that run on liquid propane and we as of yesterday at 4:30 in the afternoon have one that runs on cng as well yay good okay any other questions if not we'll have a public hearing uh i've got 507 any members of the public wish to be heard on this uh, application mr rice if you'll give your name and where you're from and you have Thank three you. minutes Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Jerry Rice, I'm Candler. The question I would have is particularly to this grant is capital, but uh, it's been each time that they come, they seem to come quite often. This thing is growing into a very huge transportation department. Looks like DOT almost. Uh, what my point would be is could we get a comprehensive look of this, of how it's put together? Because if they're coming in in grants in pieces here and there, which some of them are large, some are small, we really haven't, or I haven't heard anything as a comprehensive approach to this. Uh, it's just been a piecemeal and not saying it's not working. I mean, transportation is, uh, I think, has been reasonably well, and it serves a lot of special needs population that I deal with. I certainly appreciate it, but at the same time, I think an overall look at this project, I think, would uh, benefit the county to see if it's uh, helping all of us. Thank you. Sounds like a pretty good county manager report. Is that agreeable with the board to put that on the county manager report list at some point in the future? Would you like to do that or just hear about it during the budget process, which is only a few weeks away? I'm good with budget process. I think it's legitimate question good thank you mr rice any other public comment tonight if not i will declare the public hearing closed at 509 any discussion or comments from the board move I'm approval of the resolution I second that motion been a motion by commissioner Bailey to approve the resolution a second by Commissioner Peterson is there any further discussion from the board if not all those in favor of adopting the motion say aye aye, aye. all opposed no we have adopted the resolution 5-0 thank you thank you Miss Amber uh, I believe we determined in pre-session there's no county manager report today is that right all right then we'll proceed with um, new business we have resolution regarding the western highlands area authority medicaid waiver that's um, uh, mandy stone will be talking to us about that so. mr chairman and commissioners thank you for the opportunity to follow up as you're aware at the last meeting we presented the background and a recommendation the commission asked that we post materials on our website and allow citizens an additional two weeks to review those materials and pose questions. Before I attempt to run quickly through a response to the questions or concerns that were expressed either at the last meeting or since the last meeting, I would note that Minnie Jones is here, who is the other appointment to the Western Highlands Board, that Arthur Carter is here, who is the CEO of Western Highlands, Curtis Venable, who is a legal advocate that specializes in health care issues and has done some background research for us on this, and Nancy Baker, who represents the CFACT, the consumer and family group. So you may have questions you prefer to direct to them. Judy, if you don't mind pulling up the PowerPoint. The, again, this is a mental health Medicaid 1950 BC waiver and Judy if you'll just run to the next slide one just to make the point one of the questions that came up at the last meeting is does this involve new funding or new tax dollars and it does not there are no new dollars involved in this 
The waiver doesn't expand Medicaid entitlements. One of the questions that came up last time from the audience is, are we expanding entitlements? And again, to make the point, counties can expand entitlements under the law. Only the federal government can do that. States can have the option to expand optional services, but that's not what this is about either. So there are no new expansion of entitlements and no new tax dollars involved in this. I would acknowledge the point made at the last meeting that managing an entitlement in a waiver environment presents challenges, but Western Highlands has experience with that, as do we as a community, and it really is the trend in the Medicaid world. It's, it's in an entitlement environment, it's really your best opportunity to attempt to manage cost and to buy better, purchase better services that yield better outcome for citizens. So what it really does is take the same amount of dollars and provide local flexibility to increase efficiencies. At a minimum, it has to operate at cost neutrality, so it's no new dollars. If you actually realize savings, those savings get reinvested into services, so it can expand service capacity, and that's a positive thing. The waiver would create actually 60.5 new jobs. And while it is not very popular right now to grow government jobs, um, I would note that when Western Highlands creates these jobs, this is to do a function that the state of North Carolina ha is currently contracting with an out-of-state vendor to provide. <coughs> so it is bringing jobs back to our community. Um, and Western Highlands would hire 60.5 new jobs at an average salary of $41,931. Had a lot of discussion at the last meeting about the risk pool. And what the risk pool, in the simplest terms, actually is responsible for doing is covering any liabilities. If there's either an over uh, overspending in a particular service area or an inappropriate authorization, then the risk pool covers that. And that minimizes risk to the eight counties that sit in the LMA. And that's why the resolution deals so directly with how we manage that risk pool. Judy, if you don't mind pulling up the next slide. I think the question you clearly asked of me is how will commissioners ensure that the waiver is good for consumers, good for taxpayers, and good for the community? I think if you look at the resolution that we've proposed to you, that the waiver, that your approval of the waiver requires the following conditions be met, that there are no additional county dollars involved, that the LME cannot reduce services to gain savings, that there can be no change in the LME board structure. We believe it is very important that the unique structure for Western Highlands, where we have eight county managers sitting on the board, is important as we move into this waiver environment. That the, that the area authority complete their technology plan, which is one of the um, identified needs in the review process. And that Mercer, and Mercer is the independent health care consultant that the state contracted with to evaluate, so our LME's ready that prior to, to Western Highlands actually moving into the waiver environment, Mercer must deem that they're ready, that they've built the infrastructure and that they're ready. Arthur has worked with me and agreed to um, appoint a special committee, including the, our county internal auditor, who will provide an additional layer of fiscal oversight for the waiver. I sit on the finance committee for um, the LME, as do five other county managers. So um, there's also the internal finance committee, as well as this extra committee that Arthur's agreed to appoint. We'll include a finance director from one county, and each county will actually have the opportunity to appoint people with fiscal expertise. We think it's critically important that the LME continue to work cooperatively with the Minnie Jones Clinic. The Minnie Jones Clinic is the largest integrated care um, provider in Western North Carolina. Western Highlands agrees that integration of care is both the most effective and efficient model to operate in, and we really want to deal with that in the resolution. I talked about this last time, but the resolution also says that the, that LME can't move into reinvesting savings until they fully cap the risk pool at $15 million, and this provides an additional protection to counties. I want to be really clear that a waiver does not lock us in. The LME can give 30 days notice and terminate the waiver, and Buncombe is large enough in population to make a decision to pull out of the LME if we're dissatisfied with their movement in the waiver. We believe that it's important, though, to also note that consumers are protected if the waiver terminates. The function wouldn't go away. It'd either be provided through the state's contract with value options or through another LME. But if we move into this waiver, Western Highlands makes a decision to terminate the waiver, there wouldn't be disruption in services to consumers. Um, and I think that's a really important point. 
The resolution also requires that Western Highlands make specific outcome reports to the county around number and types of services authorized and delivered. We want to make sure that we're growing, not decreasing services in this environment. When they do deny services, we want to know the numbers of denials and the reasons for those denials. And we want to know the outcomes of all the appeals. One of the things that the consumers support about about Western Highlands moving into this waiver environment is that their appeals will be heard on a local level by people they know and can talk to. We want to see the outcomes of that and as I noted above, um, we also want a regular reporting out on the fiscal performance related to the waiver. All of those elements are specifically um, detailed in the resolution you have in front of you that staff's drafted and recommended. And again, I or Mr. Carter or Ms. Baker or Ms. Jones or Mr. Venable will answer any questions the board has or the public. Have there been any specific questions, Mandy, that came forward that, that gave you pause at all? Um, all of the ones that came forward I tried to address in the PowerPoint and they basically had to do with is there additional Buncombe County tax money involved or are we expanding a federal entitlement? Mm -hmm. So the two-week period you think was was something that accomplished what we wanted to accomplish last I last do. I, I feel uh, like the meeting. commission recognized that this is a very serious issue for our cons for our consumers as well as our community and had us post that information and provide the and I and I did talk to several citizens who called either for questions or clarification right. well we, we appreciate that and 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 I think this board was wise to, to see that, that folks needed to to look at the situation and have their questions answered and appreciate all that you and and all the folks involved did. Well, we, we, and we do appreciate, and we appreciate Minnie Jones, who's here today. These folks have been bounced around like a ping pong ball. They've been mistreated, and we're trying to make it right here. And we can't do a lot about the state laws, but we can sure do something about our local law. And I don't think anybody on this board wanted to do anything that would hurt people or decrease services or give less flexibility to get these folks taken care of because they've been through enough. This has been a disaster, the state policy. We all know that, and we don't want to make it worse. And that's what I think we are hearing you say. This makes it better, and we're going to, you know, if that's the case, I'll certainly support that. It brings back the management of the services and dollars locally. Good. Okay. All right. Any other of, of the jobs, are most of them in Buncombe, the 60 jobs? Um, most of them are in Buncombe County. Um, 45 or 46 of them are through five misspeak correct me are office based another 14 will be hired in Buncombe but likely be field based traveling <laughs> throughout the other eight counties but the majority of them okay. will be in Buncombe County okay any other questions I think we're gonna I think we said we'd have a public uh, comment on this any public comment today on this waiver request yes sir You'll, if you'll say your name and where you're from, and you have three minutes, sir. My name is David King. I'm from Candler. Uh, I'm the individual that last uh, session brought up the question of the expansion of entitlements. Um, it sounds like bringing this back home is a good idea, and no one is questioning the need for uh, these services for these people. My question was about the possibility of bringing people in that may not be that critical, not necessary, and what I would have liked to have heard from this group is the, this, they're saying, no, we're not going to increase an entitlement. It's there. But it would have been, to me, good community leadership if they'd said, we're not going to tap all the resources. We want to serve those citizens that truly need this, not to go out, expand our roles, although it's good to employ people. But this is where you're getting a pushback from the taxpayer. We're seeing more and more of this hiring uh, for entitlements, government, and people want more responsibility. They want to hear responsibility coming from our leaders, such as yourself, from these institutions. I know, you know, I think the problem is they're worried. If they don't spend them all, then they won't be there next year. Needs to, needs to stop. We need leadership from yourself and other people. I don't think it's going to come from these individual groups. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. King. Any other public comment tonight? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Christine Smith, Executive Director of NAMI Western Carolina here in Asheville. 
And I answer the phone every day, and the number of services that have been cut are substantial. This is not about people moving into the area. We get very few calls from people who have just moved into the area and need new services. These are about people who are Buncombe County and Western Carolina consumers and citizens and the family members, and they need to have, Western Highlands needs to have the flexibility to serve the people who already require services. And so I would hope that um, the board will consider approving this waiver to give us more flexibility in use of hospital beds, all kinds of things that need to be taken care of because our phone at NAMI is just ringing off the hook with people who are frustrated because they cannot get the services that they need. Thank you. Thank you and NAMI, your very effective advocacy group. Any other comments? Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Jim Pitts, also from the National Alliance on Mental Illness. We're a grassroots organization. We don't even, except for Christine, we don't have a payroll, and we pay her very little. But um, the thing that is most difficult to imagine is that people with mental illnesses, if properly treated and cared for in their communities, return to being assets. These are not those people. They're our people. They are us. They are people who are already employed but who become unemployable, who don't show up for work when their health is not cared for. So investing in the people of Buncombe County is not a waste of money. It's coming to the needs of our neighbors, our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, and so forth. And so I'm in favor of the waiver because we need to invest in each other to be stronger uh, citizens. Uh, a person who is afflicted with a mental illness or an addiction would otherwise be a contributing member of society if we didn't stigmatize them and call them them. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Pitt. In the public comment, yes, sir. My name is Jim Duffy. I'm also a member of NAMI, uh, but I want to speak as a former case manager in this county. And um, I found it extremely difficult to deal with value options. They're a very large corporation that manages the affairs of many states on the eastern, eastern seaboard. And I can recall many times of having to fax papers and person-centered plans into them and have them be rejected because one page was, was not acceptable or one, one item was not acceptable. Uh, items got lost, which is uh, completely unacceptable. So I'd just like to put in a word for local management of mental health resources. Um, I've, I've dealt with Western Highlands before. There were times where I could physically go up to their location to, uh, to facilitate uh, movement on, on cases that I was working on, and I uh, found them to be very e efficient and, uh, and amiable. And uh, so I want to put a plug in for local management of mental health resources. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I want to be as fiscally conservative as anybody else here, but um, I don't see just uh, summarily rejecting uh, requests by a large corporation that's not even in the state, actually, but Value Options is not a North Carolina organization. Um, just rejecting is not the way to handle uh, the fiscal problems that we're encountering now. I think locally you'll have a lot more control and, and services will be, will be much better if we'll let Western Highlands manage it. Thank you, Mr. Duffy. Any other public comment tonight? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Not ask you, hold your applause. I, I, I think um, a little late to say that, but let, let's, let's hold the applause. I'm and, Janet and, and jeers if there are any. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm Jeanette Price Farrell, longtime resident of North Carolina in Asheville. Um, I really, and I run a parent resource center for families with children with disabilities and a parent of a 14 year old with disabilities, almost 15. And I really came up to answer his question. The people that are being served currently under this waiver or under this, these services from the state are going to be no more than what will be served later unless they qualify for the services just like today. 
or next year. So it's not, ask, it's not giving more people just arbitrarily services just because we expanded a waiver. It's serving the same people that qualify today and the same people that will qualify next year. But the, the local management that was done in 2004 before the state signed a <coughs> contract and took it away uh, will be managed the same way it was then, but better because we keep the savings instead of sending them back to Raleigh. So I urge you to support this waiver. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Any other public comment? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Hello, thank you for letting me be here. My name is Nancy Baker. I'm part of CFAC, and we are an advisory committee that was put together by the state that works with the LME. And I wasn't going to say anything today because I pretty well much said what I did last week. But my son is not those people. My son is Jerry Donald Baker, lives in Rutherford County, and he is DD. He is not those people. He is an individual, a very loving, God-given angel to me, but he needs to be taken care of. And I'm not always going to be here to do that. And I've got to depend upon Western Highlands or an organization here within the eight counties to help me do that. So I urge you to think about my son and everyone else who has someone who has a mental illness or is DD or is substance abuse. They're not those people. They're individual human beings who live every day, who love, who work. My son works every day. He goes to work at 8.30 in the morning, and he gets home at 2.45 in the afternoon, and he might bring home $30 for two weeks' work. But he works, and he's worked for 20 years. So don't call him those people. His name is Jerry Donald Baker. Thank you, ma'am. Any other public comment tonight? Yes, sir. Commissioners, my name is Chris Oaks, I'm Swanoa, and um, I'm on disability because I've got um, Lawrence Parker, which is part of um, autism, and without Medicare and Medicaid, I don't know what I'd do. Please keep it going. Thank you, Chris. Good job, Chris. Anybody else? Jerry Rice. Mr. Rice. We won't repeat all that we did the last time. But uh, it's important to note that we had Blue Ridge Mental Health here years ago. The number of people that's coming back here is just replacing the ones that left. My concern is, is the service going to be better or not? At the time Blue Ridge was here, we did have services. But I can attest to the comments uh, that services might not be as good as well. I have been in meetings many a time with appeals that were so politicized at the local level that the decision was rendered at the local level as well as at the state level the same. So my concern is, is it going to be better or not, and how are we going to make sure the supervision of those appeals and how it's constructed is going to not be uh, favoritism of who you are, where you live, who you're akin to, and those kinds of things. If you think it don't happen, uh, walk in my shoes and I'll show you some things. Two people, one in Buncombe and one in Hendersonville. One called me yesterday, one called me this morning. The one called me yesterday in Buncombe said they made the call, and the call was made to Western Highland and said if it's not an emergency, It'll be 30 days before we'll be able to see you. After you're seen, it'll be 30 more days before you are connected and put with the provider. That meeting is tape recorded conversation that I'm telling you about. So it's nothing that can be denied. The other one from Hendersonville uh, went through the same rigmarole. And, and I'm just telling you, the hospital come out after we had our last meeting on this particular subject, and you heard it on the news, how serious a problem that the hospital has got with people with mental illness coming to the emergency room. My concern is not just with mental illness. NAMI is doing a great job. They have. 
but we've got developmental disabilities, we've got substance abuse, the schools are so full of substance abuse, the sheriff can attest to it or anybody else. This is one of the worst problems in Buncombe County that we've got and very little is being done about it locally or statewide. And to me, if we're gonna look at the kids, we better be looking at the drug abuse and the substance abuse at the elementary level and right on up because that's gonna create a bigger problem with the mental health end of it and substance abuse end of it later as we see these things come to fruition. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Any other public comment tonight? If not, I'll declare the uh, public comment closed at 532. Is there a motion to adopt the waiver? So moved. Second. Been a motion by Commissioner Peterson, a second by Vice Chair Stanley. Is there any discussion with the board? I just wanted to, um, first of all, uh, thank Commissioner Peterson for uh, the wisdom to expand this for two weeks to make sure this was fleshed out because I was, I was ready to vote last week. and. Um, but it's been it's been good to feel like we're even on more solid ground. Um, I thank um, Mr. Schoenheit uh, for the for the data that he provided me. He did very uh, prompt follow up, and that was helpful. And I appreciate all the time that the advocates, as well as Mr. Venable, spent um, helping me uh, get up to speed. Uh, but I also have to really thank. Um, uh, Mandy Stone, because these bullets at the end of this resolution are are the key to uh, me being able to sleep at night at this sh pretty huge financial <laughs> change that we're doing. I feel like that those are really thoughtful safeguards, both financially as, as well as service uh, providing um, quality assurance indicators and I appreciate that um, I, I hear through the grapevine that other counties are copying those uh, caveats and including them in their resolution so we should you should get a cut from that or something yes, Mandy but um, but anyway I, I just want to highlight those because I think that's the key to uh, the security of this transition and while nothing is a hundred percent I think this really teases tees us up well and and finally I um, I just want to say um, what a lucky guy uh, Jerry Randall Baker is to have a mom like he does. Any other comments or questions? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, no. We have adopted the waiver 5-0. Thank you all. Next up, we're going to add the resolution delegating authority for the co-manager to execute estoppel agreements. And this is an add-on that was not on our original agenda. Mr. Frew, if you'll tell us about it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. This is a titled resolution delegating authority to execute estoppel agreements with the city of Asheville to the county manager. Uh, we, we have some construction going on in the county. The county government does with the life safety addition and renovations across the street on Woodfin and down on Cox. And what these uh, requests come from time to time with the city, it just becomes sometimes cumbersome as it's really only a legal matter to review and approve for appropriateness. The city has a specific set of statutes or ordinances, that is, for the laying of their water lines. And when there's construction, time frames get out of whack. And so when they're going to put in f direct fire uh, prevention uh, lines or backflow per meters, in a construction zone that varies the way the ordinances are usually applied so they just request an estoppel agreement so that they can do things in the fashion needed to accommodate the construction so rather than come to this board and request piecemeal uh, such uh, arrangements we just ask that the county manager be authorized to sign these estoppel agreements when they're presented with the approval of the county attorney's office all right so are there any questions of mr frew about this uh, add-on move approval Second. Second. And a motion by Commissioner ba uh, Bailey, a second by Commissioner Peterson. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. The motion is adopted 5 0. Uh, next on our agenda, we have board appointments. Are there any nominees for the Adult Care Home Community Advisory Committee? Mr. Chairman, I nominate Denise Smith and Jesse Horner. All right, Ms. Smith and Ms. Horner have been uh, nominated. Any further nominations? 
All those in favor of those individuals say aye. 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 All opposed, no. They are so appointed. Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee. We have three vacancies. Any nominations? Mr. Chairman, I nominate Lana White. Wild. This one, Wild, Wild has been that. nominated. Yeah. Any further nominations? All those in favor of Miss Wild being appointed to that committee say aye. 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 All opposed, no. <clears throat> Miss Wild is appointed. We also have current vacancies at the Historic Resource Commission. We have two vacancies. Our next meeting is scheduled for April 5, 2011 at 430. There will be members of the board attending the legislative conference in Washington in March. Uh, commissioner meetings can be seen VCTV Charter Cable Channel 2 on Tuesday and Thursday at 8, Wednesday at 3 p.m., Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m., or online anytime at buncombecounty.org. Uh, I believe we see, are going to have a closed session. Is that right? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, pursuant to General Statute 143.318.11A4, we have two economic development matters on. All right. And before that, we have public comment. Uh, the floor will be open for any public comment. Uh, three minutes if you'll give your name and where you're from. And uh, please come up. Yes, sir. My name is Chris Eck and I live in Weaverville. And I'd like to address the travel and technology allowance, uh, allowances or stipends. I retired from the United States Marine Corps and also worked for 21 years leading manufacturing operations across this country. I've been the le leader of literally thousands of people. I've learned a lot about people in that time. Those who've been in power for a long time first feel like they're invincible. This feeling leads to an arrogance and the arrogance leads to a sense of entitlement. Quotes like, I'll not work for a penny less, and I think the pay is about right, indicates entitlement. I've heard that some of the commissioners are trying to walk back these comments, but in my experience, the first blush reaction from people is one of the most honest ones you'll get. While the citizens of this county have experienced job losses, pay reductions, and taking jobs with lower pay just so they can put food on the table, our county commissioners have paid themselves handsomely for these allowances. And without regard to the hardships of your tax-paying citizens, we're learning of others in the county that you're paying at the highest levels in the state. This sounds like you simply don't care about us. That's what we call arrogance. Since light was shed on this problem, you've agreed to cut your allowances in half. This is not an acceptable solution. Whether you travel or not, you're still proposing to pay yourselves an automatic $640 a month. I noted with interest when Commissioner Holly, Commissioner Jones, sorry, proposed that you waive the six month health benefits waiting period, that she used the uh, justification that local businesses do not do that. I agree with <coughs> Commissioner Jones. In all of my working life, any time I traveled, the only thing I ever automatically received was a form that I then had to fill out and explain all of my actual expenses and what I actually did very specifically during that trip. Ladies and gentlemen, I urge you to adopt the same policy. You should be reimbursed for your actual expenses and just as importantly, we, the citizens of this county, should be able to see what you actually do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heck. Any other comments? Yes, sir. My front row. My name's Kevin Tipton. I live in Weaverville. I'm also a captain and paid firefighter with Barnardsville Fire Department. I had a resolution on the consent agenda. I assume it passed. I got it. It did, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to take a minute and thank this commissioner board for hearing that resolution I wanted to take a minute and thank sheriff van duncan and just tell you what kind of sheriff you have in this county i don't believe you'll find a finer man anywhere in the state uh he saw a need that our department had he didn't hesitate to volunteer to help he didn't say well i'll look into it and get back to you he filled the paperwork out in front of me and it was hand delivered uh, I just want to thank Sheriff Duncan. You don't know the pride you have when you 
see a patrol car pull up and see the sheriff himself step out of it in a uniform with a gun on, riding with a patrol deputy. You don't see that in any other county in this state, I promise you. And I also want to take a moment to thank you for what you do, for what you've done for emergency services in this county. On behalf of the Barnardsville Fire Department, its board, its officers, employees, volunteers, and more than that, the community that we serve, and especially Miss Peterson, she sort of adopted us the last few years. <laughs> we, she, she's our contact, and when we have an issue that we'd like for this board to consider, she always makes sure it gets there. But thank each and every one of you for what you did for our department. Thank you, Sheriff Duncan. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Tipton. Thank you. Next public comment. Yes, ma'am. I'm glad you had that turned off because you still don't have it fixed. It's still out of sync, the voice and then all. Um, my name is Peggy Bennett, and I live in Leicester. Chairman Gant, commissioners. Chairman Gant, you said in a recent newspaper article that you didn't want to use a mileage log because you are comfortable with getting an average of what your mileage is as long as it's not too far out of line. I have had calls and emails from dozens and dozens of people, that literally I have, who aren't comfortable with your arrangement. Use a mileage log and get paid for every single legitimate mile you travel. And you won't have to worry about being too far out of line and the taxpayers will be happy. You also said in those same newspaper articles that you received between four and 500 invitations a year to speak and you attend about half of those. That means you are getting 200 to 200 you are attending 200 to 250 meetings a year, or four to five meetings a week. Is this really necessary for the business of running our county? I have a suggestion that I hope you will consider. Post on your website every county business meeting that commissioners attend, where it is, what it's for, and who attends. I noticed that one of you have already attended two conferences in the first two months of the year, and you're getting ready to go on another one, all of you. I am giving fair warning that Citizens for Change will be paying close attention to your credit cards and expenses on these trips, whether they're posted on the website or not. When you take your spouse, it is not the taxpayer's responsibility to pay for any of their expenses that the spouse occurs the county should be reimbursed when this happens. Be frugal in the cost of a room and expenses. It is not your money. The people who have been rallying outside want you to use a mileage log. It's the right thing to do. Do the right thing. Thank you, Ms. Bennett. Any other comments? Yes, sir, Mr. Fryer. Good evening, Commissioners. Thanks for having me. My name is Mike Fryer from Fairview. Uh, on your compensation, David, enough is enough. Man up, Mr. Gant. Over the course of the last two years, over a course of two years, and the Commissioners each will receive $42,900 in taxpayers' money in addition to the salaries. This is up to $214,500 for the two years. I have estimated what I spend around fifteen thousand dollars over two years for the same expense, cover the same expenses, and additional money that means it covers for you. I believe that nearly forty-three thousand dollars is well beyond sufficient, and I propose that you take no more money, not a penny. If 
you will look on page one, the sheriff gives a, a position away of thirty-five twenty-three. That was a forty-five thousand dollar job, and a fifty-five thousand uh, dollar job. I'm on the right page. The raise for the the majors were approved on February the tenth by Miss Green and Miss Jones. Now on page two, you will see that where Miss Green sent emails to the commissioners and the department heads requesting that the yearly 1.5 raise for county employees be suspended. A thousand Buncombe County employees received nothing on that day, while three majors received $12,819 each per sheriff's request. If you turn to page three, the job that has been given up was a $45,276 job. Now if you look over on page four, the position 2102, the job that the sheriff delivered he was giving up is still effective, or the sheriff thought he was giving up is still effective. So there were, were not an $18,000 savings after the major's raises, it was 8,000. On page five, that is, a quattro page, or whatever you call it. That's the page where uh, the salaries lay, lay out. Uh, you will see that the person who held the job was given given up, 3523, was promoted to a higher payment position in 2102 job, if you look on that back page, Holly. I've seen all your stuff. Pretty easy to follow. Yeah, very easy to follow. What was the... Uh, supposed to be given up moving I oh, run out of time all right thank you mr. Fryer any other public comment tonight yes ma'am in the back Good evening, Dale Joyner. It's nice to see you, Holly, in your seat. And you too, David. Your weight loss, you look great. Thank you. I'm a producer from URTV, and the purpose is... Okay. My purpose is to come and to make a plea for um, URTV. As you see in the graphics, in 205, 205 is what we first got. Um, from the county that led was for renovation and open up URTV all the way up to 211 what we are supposed to be getting from the county uh, is much more than what should be here but it's it went from three hundred and thirteen dollars and ninety one three hundred and thirteen dollars one hundred and ninety six to twelve thousand dollars this year which the county will be giving us three thousand dollars out of twelve thousand it's an impossibility to run any business which you were once getting a hundred thousand dollars a year to where you would be getting three thousand dollars a year now we're receiving you're receiving money from the state which is a franchise fee for uh, locals that allow cable to run uh, cable through their property. Therefore, that will allow them to have um, local public access channel, which um, allows us to have the First Amendment freedom of speech. Now, there is no way URTV can run off of $3,000, and I'm sure the money that's being received um, to the state is more than $3,000 for public access TV to where the public can have freedom of speech to air whatever it is that they, they, they need to air or want to air for whatever reason. But we're just asking that you, that you reconsider and look over this graph and um, somehow come up with the funds that would allow URTV to exist. It's a great facility. Um, it give people uh, uh, a reason to, other than outside running around. Least a lot of people I hear them say, "Well, it's such crazy things going on." URTV. I'd rather see it on my TV than see it outside. 
you know, where you can't control it. I was a business owner here of, of um, Chameleon Soul Food Restaurant, the only soul food restaurant, which we closed down because we did not have enough people coming. But when we were open, we had, I tell you, so many people that were misplaced, you know, and they needed a place, and if they also with mental, mental ill um, problems. But public access give people a place to come, a place, a place to be, a place to express themselves. And I hope you will reconsider and um, think about our freedom of speech. Thank you, Ms. Jordan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other public comment? Yes, ma'am, uh, in the red, lady. Good evening. Mm -hmm. My name is Deborah Lee Williams, and I live in Black Mountain. I'm a uh, producer at URTV, and uh, I'd like maybe Mr. Gant to tell me if this is correct, what I understand about the funding of URTV, and that is that um, the cable companies use public lands. They lay their cables on public lands and uh, in order to make a profit, so to pay uh, to give something back for this ability, they provide the PEG channels, the public access, education, and government channels. And uh, so they give a certain percentage, I assume, for each um, customer that they have. And that now is going to the state, and then the state is sending the money to the county, correct? And so the cable companies, and they are collecting that. Well, I think I understand that they're collecting some from the customer as well. Or they're collecting a few Let cents. Let me get your comment. Why don't we do this? Why don't we have, let's schedule a time and go over that. And, and so we can answer in detail with the people and the numbers instead of just. Um, what, yeah. Because well, that's a fair, fair question. You need to have that. And, your time's not running now since I'm taking your time. Let's go ahead and put that on our agenda and, and get this information out because we've had two comments and had many more before. Right, because it seems like the, that they're giving the money, the cable company's providing the money, and that it's coming to the county, but it's not coming to URTV, we'll, apparently. We'll, oh. we'll, we'll get some information on that. Uh, Thank you. But, and, and we will make sure you check our calendar. And if we could get your email, we'll make sure you get notice when we have this with everybody here to talk about it. Yes, thank so you. So if you'll leave that with uh, one of our clerks And if I you could go. just say one more little thing is I consider uh, URTV is extremely important. Public access, that is very, very important. It might not be uh, entirely being used for important purposes, but all, every person with all of this media going on, every community needs a community channel on TV where they can communicate with their neighbors. And uh, the First Amendment right, it's all, I think it's very important and I think it would be a travesty to lose your TV. If, if you'll leave your email, we will make sure you get notice. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Luella Whitmer. Uh, I'm a part of your TV And the mayor's family. mother, it's good to have yes. you here, ma'am. I'm a part of the family, and I'm standing here because I think uh, as I was coming in, I heard something about trash. But I think another man's trash is another man's treasure. And when I look at URTV, when it says that we are trash, that hurts. When you get phone calls at 3 a.m. in the morning, and this just happened to me, and a prostitute is on the other end and says, I had enough. I've been watching your show, and I'm giving it up. And I met her a couple of hours later and helped her to go through transition through what she's going through. And then you say, that's trash? That's not trash. I'm not saying you call it trash. But the fact is, URTV is reaching a lot of families, a lot of homes, and it's touching a lot of lives. When young people can go to hospice and have a party with someone who's getting ready to die, and then leave there and go to URTV and have fun and call their name over the airway, 
and that was on Saturday, and Monday, that person is out of hospice. When you look at URTV, it's a family. We need that. It, not only are we helping people that are sick, you know what? You are a TV because what we are doing helped 135 people that were on the street get homes, get jobs in school, and went back home. So that's, that's important. That's not trash. That's very important. When you shut down your TV, you're shutting down where I can call 1 and 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. I got up because I thought that was very important that she want to change her life. But if I wasn't on TV, she wouldn't have knew my number. The fact is, we are so important. It might be trash, but guess what? Somebody liked that trash. Because I went to the street, and I got that young lady. I even gave her my coat. I wanted that coat, too, remind you. But I'm telling you, please, think about it. They are reaching lives. Thank you. Thank you for your service very much. Thank you. Any other public comment tonight? Yes, sir. The back. I'm going to go ahead. You'll be next up, man, if you want. Uh, you raise, you'll be next up. If you can sit that first seat, we'll get you right after. Thank you. Yeah, my name is uh, Bob Horn. I live in Leicester. I'm also... Uh, Vice President of the Board of Directors for the Western North Carolina Community Media Center. Um, you've, you've got a number of graphs before you. We have the distribution for URTV, and you can see the, how the amounts have fallen off. Um, we have been told that uh, <clears throat> our funding has basically been cut drastically, to like $3,000, $4,000. That doesn't even cover our rent. Our rent is like $3,500 a month. So, needless to say, we won't be here very long if we don't, uh, if we're not funded properly. Also, I'd like to draw your attention to a document. Um, it was uh, the Buncombe County taxed revenue for video programming distribution. In the past, we have gotten our money through franchise fees. And basically, what that was is um, we made a, a, a contract with a cable company to allow them to have right away to distribute to run their cables through every house in the community or in the county in this case and for that consideration we receive funds from them because they're making a profit because they're selling a service to the citizens and we as the citizens get something back for that and that was passed on along to us to create this pe these peg channels like this for example is part of that money spent for that but also there's another part that's used for educational and government. And we're, we're the public part. And I'm part of that. I am a citizen of the county like the rest of you. But what we have here is a service that gives us our First Amendment right to speak on any topic freely. Like here tonight, I only get three minutes. You come down to public access, you can have a half hour to an hour on any topic you'd like to speak about. Now, for me, what I see here, they show the distribution. We have two uh, certified PEG channels. Uh, we're supposed to get a supplemental fee. Some people are thinking that supplemental, supplemental to most of us means in addition to. But what I'm hearing, oh, this is what you've got to live on. $8,000 a quarter, which is split to 4,000. And then time we get, I think it's down to like 3,000 something. But we also, also from the state, we get funding from, um, from sales tax for video programming. We also get uh, sales tax on direct-to-home satellite. We also, as a county, get sales tax for telecommunication services, which totals, just as last year, between July 1st to 9-30-2010, dollars and 69 cents. Now, I sat there and pro projected it yearly total based on this number uh, I'd like to continue. So Why don't you finish that thought up? Because I think, I think we, we, we're going to have a detail. We've talked in okay. my office, Bob, and I appreciate that. I think we need to flesh out where the money, where the money is and, and how it's allocated. So why don't you finish that okay, thought up? Okay, so the basically meeting. the thought is here, this is going to come out to $1,579,946.76. 
And we were budgeted, you know, like figure around a hundred yeah, thousand. Thought, sorry, yeah, okay, I'm, but you know, hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. okay, gotcha. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you for yeah, your I'm time. Sorry. We got to pay everybody the same. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Warren. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I'm Jeff Turner. I'm here before you again, uh, uh, speaking on the same topic that Mr. Horn was just on. I don't have the same information as he, but uh, I left with you a, a handwritten copy of uh, my assessment of it last few weeks ago, and I don't know if any of you read that or not, but to further up on that, you know, uh, the importance of it, other than what's been stated here tonight, is, is that when all those 100 or 200 producers are out there doing our thing, every day of the week it seems uh we're generating capital revenue all over town as we go now i don't know how much to generate personally you know in my little ventures but uh i'd say a conservative estimate especially with inflated prices of gas and everything is probably fifty dollars per show you know already that i'm having to move around town eat and dine and like i said buy and purchase things for the uh, show dvds and such and when you multiply that towards all these different folks and all the different people that use that, you know, we are what's happening in the community, I would argue, uh, or at least a good chunk of it. And uh, to take it away would just be a further bad thing, I believe, uh, you know, because we've suffered enough job losses, we've suffered enough money not moving. The whole deal for the U.S. economy and the state economy is to keep circulation of the money's going. If it don't circulate, it ain't moving. You know, the economy's pretty dead, no matter what you got in your pocket. And we add a lot to that. So from that factor, you know, we're paying taxes all over town, basically. And uh, we just like to maintain that and, you know, keep giving folks the opportunity to come up there and use it. You've seen the commercials. Hopefully some of you watch it. You know, the children are up there testifying about things and getting better grades in school. And uh, I think that, uh, the majority of us over, speaking for the majority of them for a moment, uh, we're trying to put out good television and uh, um, good programming and, you know, good's an optional word for however you think, but uh, to me, I got my own morality code and I try to live within that. I live within my budget and I do the best I can. I've got 42 seconds. I'd like to say I do thank you for your service over the years. Uh, I don't know um, if I should be but I, I will. Uh, I said before this is an honorable for, uh, format up here, and I don't want to bring it down. Uh, I've tried to remain an honorable person. I really have, even though I'm due to spout my mouth off like anybody else in the citizenship part of it. Uh, there's a lot to consider. I know you got your plates full all the time, and I do hope that you will give us strong consideration about the uh, economic part that we do in our community. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Thank you, sir. Any other public comment tonight? Yes, ma'am. Oh, so, yeah, that's right. You're purple and then green. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Linda Gans, and I just wanted you to see a face with the emails that you've been getting from me on vacation rentals. <laughs> And I just really want to just drop these off for you to hold on to and read when the time is right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gantz. G-A-N-Z, I believe. Is that right? I, thank you, ma'am. Any other comment? Uh, let's see. I think, did you have your hand up? You can come up, ma'am. My name is Lisa Landis, and I am a producer over at URTV, and um, I'm not one to really talk numbers unless you're talking numerology. I'm one to talk prophecy and predictions and all that kind of good stuff, and I can talk to you on your term if you want to talk um, Christian values. And it says that it's easier for the camel to go through an eye of a needle than it is for a rich person to go through um, 
um, or to get to heaven. And it's like we seem to say, I am a, a you know, have this, you know, I'm a God-fearing person, but, but yet it's like we have that other idol of, of money. And, and it's like, where are we, or when are we going to start valuing the people and the people's voices? We are in the same time as the Revolutionary War, so we are going to continue to see the, that kind of energy that's coming along. And it's like, I have to ask you, are you part of the problem, or do you know, or are you willing to work towards a solution? What you are trying to do is to close us up, and you can't, you can't. The people will not allow you, the planetary aspects will not allow you. Um, it started out with, with different programs. Oh, well, if you pro, um, produce this program, then, then, then we'll give you money. And then it was like, oh, well, if there's different program, then we'll give you money. And it's like, well, wait a minute. There's a lot of contradiction here. And I'm even going to say misappropriation of funds, because I was told that you guys had like $30 million when it first started, or have received $30 million since it first started. I'm very passionate about what I do. I have a following that is international. The information, the knowledge, it's like, you know, do you want a solution? You know, do we really want a solution? Because we talk about solutions all the time. And the next season is going to be the sustainable resolution, talking about medical cannabis and industrial hemp. Do we want other fuel sources? You know, do we want to understand that planetarily we're in the solar cycle 24, and right now we're having a solar, a solar flare every single day. You know, how does that affect the Earth? Do you guys understand that? Do you want to talk spiritual or do you want to talk scientific fact? But that's what we talk about. And what's fair is fair. What's honest is honest. I don't know the difference between a frickin' Democrat or Republican, but I do know right from wrong. I do know lies from truth. So I come to you and I'm going to keep coming back to you until we the people keep our voice. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Landis. Any other public comment tonight? Mr. Sheriff? Chairman, I may need more than three minutes, so if you need to call for a show of hands, we might want to do that before I get started. You're elected Thank official. You. Thank you, Commissioner Stanley. You're elected official. You go right ahead, sir. Okay. Um, I guess probably as good a, a good a place to start this is from Mike Fryer's comment. Uh, I don't think it's any secret that the county manager, manager and I have had some issues trying to get through some budgetary issues and some things that we've tried to work out down through the years. And uh, I have asked on numerous occasions for help with those things. And uh, you, um, I think basically unofficially, uh, Commissioner Jones was asked to come try to negotiate some of those things and to become involved in that process. And she has done that. Uh, she, she has come to the sheriff's office. She was involved in the raises uh, and the things that we gave to the three majors and the issues involving that. Um, she also has come to take a look at the budget and some of the things as we move towards this budget reduction for 2011 that public safety is kind of hanging in the balance. We need to make some very careful decisions and we need somebody to help us apparently with that negotiation. Uh, what I would like to ask the commissioners tonight is to publicly recognize that role if you ask her to stay in it because I think as Mr. Fryer has shown, she gets represented as going into these things on her own instead of something that she's been asked to do. So I think it would probably be healthy for this going forward for her role to be defined and recognized so that we know when she enters into these issues that she's doing so being asked to do so as opposed to taking something up on her own. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Any other public comment tonight? Mr. Rice? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. At the last meeting, there was some comparisons of uh, numbers put out uh, by the county manager on slides, and I have give you a sheet of color. And I, at the bottom, go from the yalla down. You've already seen from the top up. 
uh, they was in comparison to our counties that she gave us, and I just wanted to show that the only county that we have, we have Buncombe County of 2010, we got 230,000 people, 230,421. The closest one to that is 35,000 in population. The rest of them are like 894,000 uh, in Mecklenburg, 266,000, 892,000, 475,000, 321,000, 355,000. There's no way you compare dollars to dollars when you got populations of this magnitude. Then look at the revenue source down at the bottom. Now, if you don't like my statistics on here, go to the Department of Revenue that I've provided you a copy on, and you'll see that that I'm giving you the facts. And it's not Jerry's doings. It's Department of Revenue that you have to report your figures to. So the increase going to property tax, the increase on property tax for 2005 was like $108 million collected. Today it's $151 million. And if you tack on the school fund balance, which is $6.4 million right now, that they don't even have to carry over in the county school board, you've got that additional fund that you can actually use. Now, don't tell me you can't go in there and do something about it. You can reduce what you give them in current expense, and you've done it. So they carried this fund balance of $6 million for 10 years or better, and it's been up as high as $8 million and something. So it's close to $50 million when you look at the overall amounts of money that's coming into Buncombe County for 2005. It'd be shocking to see what else I could dig out. But my, my concern is that they're talking about it, looking at a third party to look at these things that <coughs> the county manager is presenting to you. We don't need no third party. If you ain't got sense enough to figure things out as a public body, and have good educators like you've been in the past, if you can't add two and two, you don't need to be up there. Now, I have another concern. Every meeting I've been to for the last three, they've been 10 deputies here. Okay, Jerry, when thank you. you. Okay, you, you, you give me a little bit. They gave, Just finish that thought. Thanks, sir. If you divide 10 into 230,000, we need 23,000 deputies to take care of Buncombe County. If they're going to guard you down here, and if there's a real need of safety down here, they need to be guarding you all up here in your chambers where you have the open door and anybody can walk in. All right, Mr. Price, so, thank you. Yes, thank sir, you. thank you. Any other public comment tonight? If not, is there a motion to go uh, see it glow in clo closed session? So moved. Do we expect any action at the end? Uh, no, sir, Mr. Chairman, other than direction. All right, sir. We are in closed yeah, session. Two-minute break, two break. Thank you. I don't understand, didn't understand any of that. Hey.